afternoon, Hornet family. It's your girl, Yadi, with DESU-TV. I'm thrilled to be joined by Dr. Julius Johnson, a distinguished career foreign service officer and a prominent figure in international development and diplomacy. Today, we'll be discussing the Experts in Residence program here at Delaware State University and how it serves as a gateway to a world of opportunities to gain valuable insights into global affairs. Welcome to the studio, Dr. Johnson. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. Thank you very much. Ramadan Mubarak. Ramadan Kareem. Thank you so much. I hope it's been a month full of blessings for you and your family. Thank you very much. It has, and I'm thrilled to be here today. So, Dr. Johnson, your career path has been truly remarkable, marked by dedication to promoting positive change globally. Could you share your insights about your journey and how your experiences have shaped your expertise? Well, uh, insights about my journey, I would say my journey has really been a combination of serendipity, planning, uh, and tremendous effort and support. It started when I grew up in New York around people from all over the world, mm -hmm. went on to St. Lawrence University undergraduate school and then Yale University for graduate school. Wow, mashallah. Alhamdulillah. And then received my PhD at Howard. Mm. And through that entire academic journey, I was exposed to a myriad of disciplines that provided a global IQ that then resulted in me strengthening my thirst for what was happening around the world, mm -hmm. which eventually led to my being sworn into the foreign service. Right, I love that. I wanna shift our focus to the conversation of the expert in residence program. Can you tell me a little about what that program provides for the students and the benefits that it can extend out to the Delaware State University community? Well, absolutely. The expert in residence program is an initiative spearheaded by the United States Agency for mm -hmm. International Development, the premier development organization throughout the world. Mm -hmm. And the idea really is to leverage a diverse pool of experts from USAID to provide training, counseling, uh, opportunities to students, faculty, and administrators mm -hmm. here at Delaware State University in the field of research, collaboration, publications, and connections. Mm -hmm. Okay. That, that actually sounds really amazing, and it sounds like a really great initiative. Can you share any success stories about your experiences from your time as an expert in residence? Oh, my goodness. Well, I'm on a temporary duty assignment. Mm -hmm. I'm the inaugural expert in residence here. And since I've been here, we've been essentially building out the program, mm -hmm. meeting with amazing students during a series of roundtables, with my uh, point of contact, Shelvia Draper, who has just been outstanding in opening up pathways into students, into faculty, as well as administrators. So we've met with the heads of most of the departments here at Delaware State University, sharing what the program is all about. Mm -hmm. uh, but I must confess that the students have been amazing. We participated, for example, in the career fair yesterday mm -hmm. on campus. And we're now putting together a list of subject matter experts that we're hoping to bring here to Delaware State University to increase and strengthen the capacity of the institution. Right. And you said you were hoping to bring it here, so it's not here yet? Well, the, the way the program is designed, mm -hmm. we're hoping to, to leverage our technical uh, resources through our experts at USAID and bring them here at different time intervals depending on the needs that Delaware State University has. So those may be needs of, in lecturing, doing workshops, counseling, mm -hmm. helping on a grant, lecturing in a classroom, uh, providing expertise in a particular subject area like climate change, the environment, technology, agriculture, things that matter. water, things that matter. Things that matter, That yes. would be DSU-led mm -hmm. and DSU-managed. Mm -hmm. Okay, can we talk specifically about your experience in Kenya and how it exposed you to different 
opportunities or, or even just different perspectives and experiences. I know that a lot of students here, they look forward to going and doing things internationally, making an impact outside of our borders, but it can be scary and it can be very intimidating once you, you know, take that big step to actually make that change. So can we talk about how, you know, we can encourage the students, faculty or staff to want to take this initiative? Well, you know, I think we always need to start where we are right. and work with what we have. And that's certainly what I did when I was an undergraduate. I first went to Kenya in 1988 wow. uh, on a student abroad program mm -hmm. that St. Lawrence University uh, had as a part of its four-year experience. Uh, and since that time, uh, I was very clear about my North Star, which was international relations and foreign affairs. Um, it, being in Kenya as a foreign service officer is, is extraordinary. And I would say the highlight of my uh, experience thus far were the presidential elections that recently took place where I served as an election monitor. Mm -hmm. That was an exciting opportunity to see democracy at work, citizens coming out to vote, registering to vote, having those elections uh, certified with over 16,000 monitors from all over the world was wow. very exciting and fulfilling. With respect to students increasing their awareness mm -hmm. about Kenya in particular and international relations in general, I would say start where you are. Reach out to faculty on campus, mm -hmm. because here at Delaware State, for example, you've got faculty from all over the world, the yeah. Middle East, Africa, Asia, which is a real asset. Mm -hmm. Also, technologically, there are all sorts of technical uh, instruments that students can tap into to raise their level of global awareness from the content that they consume, the media that they consume, the faculty that are here, the different delegations that come on campus, mm -hmm. the student body that's diverse, the programming that they listen to. We live in a global community and much of the world is right here in your dormitories. So having that situational awareness, keeping your head on a swivel and paying attention to the foods you eat, the mm. music you listen to, the content that you can consume, all prepares you for a career in foreign affairs. Mm -hmm. I hope that this video especially reaches out to the people that it reaches out to the people that, you know, genuinely want to be in this field and genuinely want to put their time and effort into making international development like yourself. I thank you for your contribution to everything that you have done in the Middle East, Africa, and all throughout your journey. I know it's remarkable. I read a little about it doing some research. So Thank you. It was an honor to interview you. Well, the honor, the honor is all mine. You yes. are an exceptional student, and we are expecting very big things from you. Inshallah. This has been a wonderful experience, and we are so happy to be a part of this relationship with Delaware State University. Mm -hmm. And, of course, we want to thank uh, Antonio Boyle, who has provided tremendous support, as well as your president, President Allen, and of course, our leadership, Administrator Samantha Powers and Counselor Clinton White. Thank you, Dr. Johnson, for joining me today and sharing your experience and insights about the Expert in Residence program. Your commitment to positive impact is truly inspiring, and I know this is going to make a major impact on the Dell State community. And for those who are tuning in, this wraps up our interview. If you are interested in this program, make sure that you check out our bio, click those links, and reach out to Shelvia Draper. We hope you found this discussion enlightening and informative. Until next time, Hornets, keep being great.